What is going on YouTube? Lamont at large with the city of San Antonio as the background. Coming to you from the Alamo Masonic Cemetery here, of course, in San Antonio, Texas. And today I'm here to visit the grave of one Sandra West, the woman who was buried in her car. This is probably the most famous grave here in San Antonio and it probably garners the most attention when it comes to people coming to cemeteries and um, visiting them. So let's talk a little bit about Sandra and who she kind of was. Uh, she was born in Beverly Hills on January 2nd, 1939. She was born to a middle-class family. Her mother and father operated a children's clothing store in Beverly Hills. And as a little girl, she would see, when she was working in her family's business, all these uber-wealthy people with their nice cars, their fancy jewelry, fancy clothes. And she grew up almost, in a sense, idolizing them and want, wanting to be a part of their uh, crowds, if you will. And she did just that. Was it by going to school, getting an education, working really hard, and achieving all the financial goals you have in life? No. It was by her God-given good looks. Uh, this woman was very attractive. Uh, so attractive, she garnered the attention of men all over Beverly Hills, uh, all over California, including Elvis Presley, and of course, old blue eyes, Frank Sinatra himself. So she started dating a man named Sol West. Uh, Sol West was a part of the uh, West family. Uh, They're a bunch of oil tycoons, very, very wealthy family. So she was dating him for a while, but come to find out uh, she, he wasn't the real heir to the family fortune. No, no, not at all. She was wasting her time with him. The real heir was his brother, Ike West. However, there was only one problem in her setting her eyes on Ike, and that it was that he was a hopeless drug addict and alcoholic. Uh, so bad, in fact, uh, his family getting tired of him getting into trouble, embarrassing them, uh, sent him off to Mexico to just kind of get them, get him out of their hair. So being the woman that wants what she wants, and she wanted him, she wanted a part of that family. She went down to Mexico, met him, helped him clean up his act, and brought him back to the United States and they later on got married and after he died in 1968 he left her about five million dollars so now this woman at the time she's in her early 30s excuse me late 20s and a multimillionaire. Five million dollars and being that rich then, if she would have lived another 40 years, she probably, probably would have been very wealthy and very well off, probably worth more than a hundred million dollars simply by investing in real estate, just by my own estimation. Anyways, she was known in the social clubs around the Beverly Hills area as somewhat of an eccentric woman, uh, very flashy, loved attention. This woman loved attention. She would often zoom around Beverly Hills in uh, a fleet of different cars that she had, uh, one of them being a Stutz Blackhawk. And she had three Porsches. She had a 365 GT2 and 2, a 1973 Porsche Dino, but her favorite car, her favorite car was a 1964 Ferrari 330 America, powder blue. That car, when she bought it brand new, was about $20,000. 
in today's day and age, if she, or not her, but if somebody were to sell that exact same car in near mint condition, uh, you're going to get almost half a million for that vehicle. And she was also known as a party girl. She had gotten into a car accident and dealing with the pain, doctors had prescribed her uh, pain medication, which she quickly became addicted to. And during the last years of her life, she was partying up a storm and popping those pills, boy, uh, pill popping machine. And sadly, she died of a drug overdose on March 10th, 1977, at the age of 38. And she was buried in the Los Angeles area. However, in 1972, she made out a will with an unusual request, if you will, or demand, whatever you want to call it. That being that she wanted to be buried in the car that she loved so much, her 1964 Porsche 330 America. She wanted to be buried in her lace negligee with the seat reclined back in a comfortable fashion. This is all in the will, by the way, guys, all in the will. And the executive of her estate, which was her ex-boyfriend, Sol West, when she died, he balked at such demands. However, it was stipulated in the will that, Mr. Sol West, if you do not request or grant my final request, you're not getting any of my money in the will. And this guy thought that this was so ridiculous that for three months he fought in the courts to have her final wishes uh, denied. And the judge said, listen, that's what a will is. <laughs> it's the last living testament of somebody. If she wants to be buried in her car, then she will be buried in her car. And if you don't grant it like the will stipulates, then you are not entitled to the uh, share of her fairly vast fortune. So he did as he was instructed to. She was dug up from her temporary grave, placed in her car, reclined, of course, in a comfortable fashion. And she was placed in a wooden crate in the car, placed on a train and shipped over to Texas. When she came over to Texas, this was already all over the news. This was a pretty big story then because it was so unusual what was going on. And a crane held the box, which was 19 feet long, 10 feet long and nine feet deep with Miss West's body, of course, reclined in a comfortable position wearing her lace negligee, was placed right here in this grave. And some say that before her death, she had became infatuated with Egyptian mythology about one being buried with their possessions. And you can see this is where her grave is. Sandra West, 1939 to 1977. This is her husband, Ike West, 1934 to 1968. And the man who did not want to do any of this because he thought it was ridiculous, Sol West, uh, 1938 to, to November 29th, 2012. So you can kind of see right here how the grass doesn't really grow. Well, th well, this is this is the the area where the 
crane dropped the wooden crate. And in case you've never been in San Antonio or don't know the area very well, uh, this is not the best of neighborhoods. I don't feel it's the worst, but uh, maybe back in those days, uh, it was worse than it was today. So to make sure that nobody would attempt to dig up the grave because some police officers would say that uh, if you bury that car, it would be out on the streets of San Antonio tomorrow. Uh, they reinforced it in a concrete box. So uh, if you want that car, uh, you're going to have to do a lot of digging. And uh, I don't know if the car would be worth much today other than the aspect of somebody being buried in it. Because after being in the ground for almost 45 years, you would think that the car has deteriorated. I would be, uh, I would wonder myself what kind of condition the car's in uh, being underground for all those years. But anyways, this grave gets lots of visits every year. Thousands of people visit this grave. As a matter of fact, while I was vlogging, uh, there was people here uh, visiting the grave. So anyways, yeah, it lived a flashy life. Uh, the excesses that money could afford, but however, the grip of drug addiction uh, claimed uh, a young woman's life and, you know, a sad story to say the least uh, even though she was very wealthy and all of that uh, people would say that she had very few true friends and she was very generous um, known for being very generous in uh, Los Angeles giving people gifts uh, she had given one of the nurses that was taking care of her I want to say a very expensive piece of jewelry very very expensive and she did lavish gifts on people that worked for her um friends or even associates so-called friends or what have you so yeah sandra west just uh, one of those burials that you'll never forget rest in peace to her and of course ike and soul the west brothers and uh this is the uh their parents, uh, Ike and Nelly, registered nurse. Okay, guys. I am out of here. This is the West family grave, and uh, that is where the car is buried. Guys, thank you for watching this vlog. I appreciate it, and I will catch up with you on the next one uh, live, but not live but still alive by the grace of God himself, Lamont at large, continuing my journey across the highways and byways of this great nation of ours. I'll see you next time. Peace out.